Be brave. Take a real risk. See that what bothers you is just your guilt. Look at everything that bothers you and forgive yourself for taking it so seriously. Only a guilty person would take anything in your mad world so seriously. You have only one person to forgive in your journey, and that is yourself. You are the judge, you are the jury, and you are the prisoner. An unholy trinity, to be sure. Loosen up, my friend. Everything you think you did to others is just a form of self-punishment. You are the one who must live with the guilt, not them. The more guilty you feel, the more you will beat yourself up. Projecting your guilt onto someone else and beating him up only adds to the guilt that you carry. The only way out of this labyrinth of fear is to practice forgiveness. Forgive everything that you think is wrong by forgiving yourself for being in judgment. Look at every judgment you make with compassion for yourself and the person you are judging. Do not justify your judgments and you will not make your illusions real. In the present moment, fear, judgment, and expectation are overturned. Past and future are brought into the now. And so there is only this moment and the way you see it now. And if you see it fearfully, you look straight at your fear. And if you see it judgmentally, you look straight at your judgment. And as you forgive your fear and your judgment, they get out of the way. And you're not looking through a glass darkly. You're dwelling at ease with what is. Forgiveness is the way because it unlocks the grip of time upon the wound. Where there is no time, there is no wound. You are not guilty of any sin, my brother, but you believe that you are. And while you believe this, you will need forgiveness. It is the only way out of your self-imposed illusion. Mistakenly, you believe that you can hurt another and that this other can hurt you. These are the thoughts that run your world. And so you have come here to see all of the effects of your beliefs and to recognize at last that they are not true. If a single one of you could be hurt, if your wholeness could be compromised or damaged by suffering or death, then your world would be beyond heaven's reach, and all your murderous thoughts would run rampant throughout eternity. Yours would be a dark and unredeemable world. I know at times it seems as if this were true, but it is not true now, nor has it been true even in the darkest of times. Your world, your life, your thoughts have never been beyond the reach of heaven, for heaven is here, my brother, and heaven is now. You see what you choose to see, because all perception is a choice, and when you cease to impose your meanings on what you see, your spiritual eyes will open, and you will see a world free of judgment and shining in its endless beauty. The shackles of earth will fall away and you will be free to ascend to your place amongst the brightest stars. There you will look down on earth, as I do now, and you will say with compassion, There I walked too when I was afraid, and learned to walk through all my fears. It is a holy place, a place where every enemy became a friend, and every friend a brother and a teacher, a holy land where the dream of death and separation came to an end. I feel privileged to have taken the journey and happy to be home at last. Then you know that you do not have to take the journey to be saved. You could have stayed home without any transit. No, I meant. You could have stayed home without any taint on your innocence. But had you not taken the journey, you would not have known your innocence, as I know it, and as our Father Mother does. An angel who has not fallen from grace can never be a co-creator with God, for he or she is not capable of conscious creation. To create consciously, you must understand your creation, and to understand your creation, you must join with them and experience their journey. This you have done, my friend, and so welcome home. Your journey through sin and death has left you spotless and exuberant. Hallelujah! Lucifer has been redeemed. The prodigal son has returned home. 
all the angels in heaven are rejoicing, but those who have taken the journey themselves are also shedding tears of joy. The Death of the Ego It is the nature of the ego to divide and conquer. Where it cannot divide, it cannot conquer. Every thought either separates or unites. Thoughts that separate one idea from another or one person from another obscure your awareness of the unity. Thoughts that link one person to another or one idea to another reveal the unity. Ideas can become opponents just as easily as the people who think them. You think that you can attack people's ideas without attacking them, attacking them but there aren't many people who won't feel personally attacked when you attack their ideas. People identify with the thoughts that they think. If you want to communicate with people, find a way to acknowledge and include their ideas. Then, when you express your own ideas, it will be easier for others to acknowledge them. People will never be able to be together peacefully until their ideas can dwell together without competition. To accept another person's idea, even when you don't agree with it, is to extend to him respect and trust. Dwelling together in peace requires that you see what links you to others, not what separates you. If you see what links you, you will res respect your differences. If you see what separates you, you will try to overcome those differences. The attempt to overcome differences invariably fails. That is because differences are healthy. As long as they are respected, they do not interfere with the potential for intimacy and cordial relations between people. Always give another the space to be different. Then you will not be avoiding intimacy with him. If you feel that you need to become like him to be accepted by him, or that he needs to become like you to be accepted by you, you are trying to overcome the differences. Just let the differences be. You are acceptable as you are. And pe uh, peace remains in your heart and in his. Everything is fine. Begin to see how much you try to change others to fit your image of how you think they should be. Be aware of how others try to change you. Feel the push and the pull. That is the world of the ego. Ego is the most insecure thing in the universe. That is why it is, it is always trying to take sides and bolster its position. It has no native confidence in itself and therefore no generosity of spirit. It hates everything because it hates itself. All its pride is but a show. Take ego apart and you find an open wound. Ego is the part of you that doesn't know that you are loved. It can't give love because it doesn't know it has love to give. How do the unloved and unlovable find love? That is the cry of every soul in exile in this world. Ego must be taught that it has love. This is a threatening proposition. For as soon as ego recognizes it has love, it ceases to be ego. Ego must die as ego, as ego to be reborn as love. Now you know why most people resist enlightenment. The idea of waking up is scary to anyone who is still asleep. You keep thinking, when I wake up, I, am, I may not be there. That is why your fear of death and your fear of waking up are the same fear. The unlimited universal self is not born until the limited temporal self dies. So death will come one way or the other. Either you will die or you will wake up which is a different kind of dying. Once you are awake, dying is no big deal. You have no more prized identity to lose. Whether you stay in physical form or not isn't important. Either way, you need to be present. Dying is one of the best ways to learn to be present. If you want to wake up quickly, try dying. When you are dying, you are aware of things in a way you will never were before. You notice every breath, every nuance, every flower, every word or gesture of love.